Hello everybody, welcome back to Firefield Junction and today we've got a very, very special review for us. As we can see, finally, after all this time, it's finally here. The brand new Class 37 from Akira Scale. Oh my god, I cannot believe that it's finally here. We've been following this project, I'm sure a lot of you have been following it, for years now. It feels like it's been an eternity since Akira Scale announced this. And finally, after all this time, it's finally here. At least the first ones are anyway, not all of them are here, but the first few have finally arrived. Oh my god, it's actually surreal that it's finally here. And this is going to be my first loco from Akira Scale as well that I've actually had in person. I have um, seen photos and videos of some of their other locos, but this will be the first loco from them that will per actually belong to me that I will actually own in person. So this is going to be quite a surreal moment for me as well. But oh my god, I cannot believe it's finally here. Now, Akira Scale have announced quite a lot of Class 37s. Um, they've also, they've already announced their second run, uh, which is going to be due, I believe, the start of next year, uh, 2024. Um, but the first ones that we've got today from these first batch, so far at the time of this video anyway, they've released 37419, 37425 and 37423. So at the moment, there's only three of them out at the time of filming. But they have also announced um, at this at the time of filming as well that the next three um, of the 37s from their first batch, which I believe um, all the next three are going to be um, all Scottish ones so with, with the top headlight and stuff, I believe, um, something like that anyway. Um, those three are apparently only weeks away. So we're not too far off having a few more 37s, 37s to choose from. Although getting hold of them may be a bit difficult, I'm not too sure. Um, Akira Scale always do usually, I believe, have a few uh, left over once they've dispatched pre-orders and counted any left over into stock. Usually there is quite a few left over, but they do sell out quite quickly. And as is quite usual with brand new releases like this, there are a lot of them already on places like eBay for ridiculous prices, which is uh, quite stupid and quite, uh, quite uh, I think, quite contempt, I think, for the customer and everything. Um, but anyway, I suppose it's something we have to deal with. Now, the one that we've got here today is 37423 in the uh, DRS plain blue. If we just look at the end of the box, it's a very, very big box. We can see there it's 37423 Spirit of the Lakes in the DRS uh, livery plain blue. Uh, it's a 37 subclass 4. This is the sound fitted version. The model code is ACC 23173743 DCC. Uh, probably the longest model code in the world there, I reckon. I'm sure, unless you can find one that's longer. And Era 11, sound fitted, uh, yeah, all the usual stuff. Uh, the box, it doesn't give too much away, I suppose. Um, the Acura Scale packaging is quite plain, but it's still very nice. But I think they might have got a bit over top of the size of the box because the boxes for these are huge. They are absolutely massive. Um, but the good thing about the box is, for a start, it weighs an absolute ton. <laughs> so I'm sure there's going to be a nice heavy loco inside there. Um, but there's not too much uh, other information on the box, really. Um, we can see you've got the ESU lock sound branding there. So I'm guessing that's uh, included on the boxes for the sound fitted models. I could be wrong. Um, but I don't see why they would include those on the DCC ready versions. Um, because it's only DCC ready or sound fitted versions of these that you can buy. There's no regular sound fitted version or deluxe version or anything like that. It's just DCC ready or sound fitted. And the price that Acura Scale are charging for these as well, the RRP is insanely good. Uh, the RRP for the uh, DCC ready version, I believe, is £160. And then the RRP for the sound fitted version, which this is, obviously, because I've just told you, um, is £260. So value for money there, insanely good. I mean, if we compare that to Backman's uh, brand new Class 37, which I will look at, so I promise I will look at one uh, when they release the one that I want, um, which uh, should be in the next month or two, hopefully. If you compare that uh, to the well, to Clear Scales one, um, I'm pretty sure if we take the price of uh, Batman's uh, standard uh, DCC sound version, which is around, I think it's somewhere around £350, I could be wrong, but it's, I'd say, some, I think it's somewhere between £330 and £350 maybe for their sound fitted version, and that's just their regular sound fitted version, their deluxe version is even more than that. So already, Acura Scale are really, really beating Batman, absolutely wiping them with the floor with value for money so far. But again, until I get one of the Batman versions, and once I do have one, and I've done a video on that, I will do a video comparing uh, the two, comparing the Acura Scale one and the new Batman one to see, just compare the two, see what's one, who does what better, maybe who does what worse, and stuff like that. And 
but certainly value for money already does seem very, very good. But anyway, I think we need to open the box and we need to see what she's like, because that's what we're interested in. So if we just slide off this plastic cover, um, which I think just help, it just hold, helps hold the box together. And if we just lift up this lid, it, it takes an age to come off though. Come on. It's coming very, very slowly. Nearly there. Ooh, there we go, finally comes off. So first things first, we've got the paperwork. So what we got here? So apparently we must read this, uh, read these, this instructions on the re reverse of this card before operating your model. Okay, I suppose we'll do that since they've told they've told us to. Oh yes, yes. Okay, so we've got. Uh, I believe this just tells you, and um, because the um, the complexity of the lighting functions on this model, um, they basically tell you what position to have these switches on the logo in, depending if you're operating on analog or DCC or sound or whatever basically just tells you there what position to have the switches in so that essentially all of the lights work as they should uh, so that's good um, I, I haven't uh, taken a look at the box yet i did take the lid off and i had a very quick look through this um but i haven't taken taken the look out the box yet um but yeah that's uh, good useful and then next up here we've got the actual paperwork and it's uh, in this nice resealable bag as well actually uh, no other manufacturer that as far as i know does this so let's open this up and we'll see what we've got in here if we can get it out, there we go. We'll put the bag to one side. So what we got here first? Uh, so I believe is this is just going to be the regular. Yeah, it's just the operating and caring for your Curascale model, and this is for the E English Electric Type Three or the BR Class Thirty Seven Slash Four. So I'm guessing if you get uh, one of these slash zeros or the dash sixes or whatever, I'm guessing the instructions for those will be slightly different. But anyway, uh, let's have a look through these. Okay, so oh, I thought it was going to be some sort of book clutch, but I think it just opens out by the looks of it. Oh yeah, okay, there we go. So a very nice big uh, sheet there. Uh, so we can see there all of these separately fitted parts, and there's quite a lot of them, I'm sure you'd agree. Uh, so should you need to replace any, that should help you identify which part you need. And uh, basically, uh, should you need to replace any, you should be able to tell a curious girl what uh, part it is exactly. And then what's this on the side? It uh, looks like removing the body shell, and some of the details it looks like it looks like they might be attached to the body by the looks of it. Yeah, I think that's what that is. Uh, yeah, I believe that's what that is. And what we've we got on the other side. Uh, so operating maintenance, warranty, and fitting detail parts. Okay, so lubrication. So yeah, it just tells you uh, the locations of where to put a uh, little, little amounts of oil. Again, you don't need much. Remember, this is double O gauge. You do not need much oil. A little drop is a fistful in 176 scale. So you really do not need much. And then we've got there the various details you can fit if you want to. Well, then I'm pretty sure one end comes uh, detailed from the factory though. So we'll, we'll see that in a moment. Uh, fitting uh, crew by the looks of it. So that's quite interesting. Uh, yeah, fitting crew. I'm pretty sure Acura Scale um, are doing their own uh, sort of 3D printed uh, crew members that you can buy to put into these if you want to. Um, I don't think they're out yet, but um, I'm pretty sure they are doing their own crew for these if you want to fit any. Uh, warranty, uh, we've got on the other side, uh, unpacking, safe operation, intended use, uh, electrical connections, uh, wheel cleaning. Yeah, all the important stuff, so that's good. Nice to have all that. And then what have we got here? Uh, I'm not sure, Charlie, sure what this is. Uh, uh, okay, operating manual for Class 37 model locomotives. Okay, so what we've got inside here then? Well, this is quite interesting. It's quite uh, eye-catching, I suppose. Uh, history, uh, driver's eye view, looks like this is uh, general stuff I think, uh, refurbishment, what else have we got, uh, sectorization, <laughs> god they really have gone to town on, on this haven't they, I think this is mainly just, uh, I think this is all just history and stuff on the class 37s, yeah so I think that's just, uh, I think it's just general stuff on the real life thing I think, not too much in there. And here we go, this is important. So this looks like the list of all the sound functions. Yeah, here we go. So this card, based on both sides, we've got the list there of all of the different sound functions that this decoder has. I'm pretty sure it's a lock sound V5 that they've got in these. And I believe it was Jamie Goodman that recorded the sound file, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was. But as we can see there, awful lot of functions on this model, so that's good. And again, considering the price, you think the decoder in this model is worth probably getting close to half of what the model is worth 
So that just again shows how insanely good the value for money is uh, with, the, with what Kyrgyzstan kind have of gotten away with here. Really, really good. But yeah, that's all that. We can look at that later when we come to run her. But anyway, are you ready to see her? If we lift up this foam. There she is. Nicely packaged, plenty of uh, foam uh, around her in the usual nice big block of ice packaging. So if we try and get her out nice and gentle, nice and gently. It's a bit tight, but again, it should uh, provide her with plenty of comfort. Oh my God, she is heavy. Really, really heavy. This must be getting close to being one of the heaviest models you can buy, I reckon. This is certainly feeling Hassan 66 heavy, without a doubt. But anyway, let's try and slide this off. It's a bit of a tight fit. Very, very tight fit, actually. There we go. And I believe I saw some accessories. Yes, we have. There we go. I've got a few accessories, actually. So first one, we've got the detail bag. So yeah, this is all the detail that could fit to the front. So we've got snow plows, electrical cables, chain link couplings, air hoses, the whole shabazz really. So if you want to fit any, fit any of that, then you can. Uh, it looks like maybe then uh, both, yeah, it looks like both ends uh, come with the tensional couplings fitted then. I thought one end would come detailed, but apparently not. Um, but at least if you do want to detail one end, which I'll definitely do at some point, I'm not going to do it in the video, but I'll definitely fit some of this at some point. There's plenty of detail there for you to fit if you want to. And then what have we got in the other bag? Ah, oh, that's very good. Very, very, no very, very nice. We've got etched name plates there that you can put over the side of the factory applied ones. Uh, they're just there. Um, but I'll definitely be fitting those at some point. Um, nice little drop of glue, maybe, and they'll go on nicely. But there's a few different ways you can fit them. Um, I tend to use a little, tiny, tiny little drop of super glue, and that works very well. I've done it many times, and it works perfectly. Anyway, put those to one side. We can worry about those later. And finally, let's have a look at the star of the show. Lift this up. There we go. Just lift this uh, packaging off. It's uh, nicely packaged and under a layer of plastic as well. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is actually nerve wracking. Well, we've got to jump in, haven't we? So we just try and move that out of the way. Let's just lift her up. Let's just go for it. Oh my God. <laughs> Wow, she is heavy, very, very heavy. Once you get Haver in your hands, you really do start to appreciate how heavy this model is. But oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, let's get her back into shots and you stop staring at her through, uh, in real life. There we go. Well, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, what is there to say? Just look at this. <laughs> this is amazing. The, oh, I just don't know what to say. Sprung buffers, but well, why would you expect any less? We can see all of the lights there, and we know they're going to work. I mean, obviously they're going to work. Got the wipers on the windows. The delivery application is really, really good. It's spot on. Do the doors open? No, the doors don't open, but that's not too bad, really. I mean, opening doors are pretty useless. They're a nice feature. They just add a bit of realism. They're not really incredibly necessary, are they? But wow, she is amazing. <laughs> I just don't know what to say about her. Um, she's just mind blowing. Why can't other manufacturers produce models this good with this level of detail and this level of quality for this price? I mean, take Hornby and Batman again, for example. If they produce a model like this, it will cost way, way more than what a Curious Girl charge. This is why Acura Scale, in the, at the moment in this day and age, this is why they're a fan favourite, because the amazing models that they produce for amazing for just an amazing amount of money. <laughs> oh, I just don't know what to say. She is absolutely fantastic. But anyway, let's have a look at some of the more some closer a closer look at some of the other details. So the bogies, well, just look how jam packed of detail, full of detail they are. You've even got the proper separately fitted chains on the bogies as well. So you want to be really, really careful with them. You don't want to damage them. You've got the NEM couplings and their kinematic couplings as well, as you can see there. And I'm sure they'll perform nicely. Usually I'm not a huge fan of kinematic couplings, but if they work well and they're reliable, then I can forgive them. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm just struggling to say anything at the moment because she's just so jam-packed for the detail. And she's so heavy as well. 
I'm being so careful to hold it, to try and hold her somewhere where I'm not going to end up crushing any of the detail under, under her own weight. But she is just amazing. The roof is fantastic as well. Even the lip, little handrails on the roof off of the panels is there as well. Got the etched grill with the fan underneath it as well there. And the roof does come off as well. If you want to fit, that's how you basically fit a decoder to these. You don't have to worry about taking off the body shell. There's no faffing around with any clips or screws. The entire roof section just comes off. It's just held on with some magnets and that's it. Really easy access to the DTC socket. Uh, should you need to chip it or whatever, whatever you need to do. I'm not going to do it at the moment uh, because I don't want to <laughs> risk damaging anything. But again, yeah, if that's how you want to chip her, just take the roof off and that's it. That's all you need to do. It's really that simple. A curious girl really have gone to town on this. But again, given their track record so far, you wouldn't expect any less from them, to be honest. She is just amazing. <laughs> I really don't know what to say about her, to be honest. She is just fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. <laughs> she really is fantastic. The cab detail as well. You can just about see inside. But there's loads of detail inside the cab, loads of painted uh, uh, <laughs> detail inside there. And we know from Cura Scale's previous locos that the lights on the dashboard inside there, onside the panels inside there, they're going to light up. We know they are because Cura Scale have done it on their previous models. So we know they're going to light up. Oh, I just don't know what to say. She is fantastic. Loads of detail all over the place. Amazing livery application. There's no blemishes anywhere. Not at all. She's just perfect in every single way. <laughs> I just don't know what to say. A curious girl have just taken they've just taken my breath away with this. She's just absolutely amazing. I think what we need to do now is take her up to the layout. Let's put her on the track. We'll test the sounds. Uh, we'll get her running in as well because she's going to need running in. Then we'll come back and we'll really see what she's like. And God, she is heavy. Okay, so here we are. Let's just put the loco on. It's quite a lot of the wheels, quite a lot of wheels to get lined up, but it should be fairly simple. Just be careful not to damage any of the detailing on the bogies. There we go. She seems to be on. That was good. So let's just put her lights on, see what they're like. There we go. There we are. So for some reason, the uh, directional lights on the the Wi-Fi card lights here seems to take a little while to come on, actually. That's a bit strange, but maybe it could just be by design, maybe how the real thing is, or it could just be how the decoder set up. I'm not too sure, uh, but anyway, they look they don't look too bad, maybe a little bit dim. I think the, the camera's making them look a little bit brighter than they are, and um, it's not too bad, I suppose. Uh, what's it like in the other direction? Yeah, it's not too bad. Again, they are quite dim. Um, I don't think you can even see them on camera, but they are on, I promise, if I just try and create a bit of a shadow for you. They are on. There we go. Might be a bit better now. Uh, they are a bit dim, probably not the best lights in the world. Um, they don't look too bad, I have seen worse. But anyway, let's give her a bit of a wiggle and see what she's like. Yeah, it's not too bad. Considering she hasn't been run in yet, <laughs> that is good. That's not too bad at all. Let's just bring her back towards the camera a bit. There we are. Yeah, not too bad. So let's, let's go through some of the functions, shall we? So I've got the sheet here just in front of me. So function two is break. So that, I believe, is just going to be a function that you can use if you're running the loco and you want to you get her to slow down just by using one of the functions, maybe. Then you can use that. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, but, or it might even have a set. I should have a sound effect with it as well, I believe. Uh, we can try that later. So function three is high tone air horn. So let's see what that's like. Yeah, that's very, very good. And uh, now remember, the speaker setup in this, um, if you aren't aware, I'm pretty sure it's an EM1 and a sugar cube speaker that's inside this loco. So <laughs> again, factory sound, and we've got uh, and we've got an EM1 speaker <laughs> inside the loco. I mean, what else can you ask for? <laughs> again, a curious girl paying attention to quality and still keeping, keeping the price reasonable. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, function four is the low tone air horn. 
Oh yeah, that's very, very good. <laughs> like that. Uh, function 5 is heavy train mode, so that, that will just affect how the loco operates. Uh, function 6 is light loco mode, so again that will affect the, the loco's performance. Uh, 7 is drive hold, so again that won't do anything while she's stationary. Function 8 is cold start slash wheel, sit, wheel slip. Now I'm not actually sure if the cold start works, because I have seen people commenting saying that the cold start doesn't work on their loco. So it might work, it might not do. Uh, we can try, we'll try it later though. Uh, function 9 is two-tone air horn. Yeah, not too bad. Function 10 is carriage door slam. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, function 11 is flower and squeal. Now, I believe uh, that uh, this loco, now I'm pretty sure one of the things with this loco um, that Akira's still done as well, it's just another amazing feature that they've managed to cram in at the amazing price that they charge. I'm pretty sure the flange squeal on this loco is automatic. I'm not entirely sure if you actually have to activate it. You might need to, but I'm pretty sure once it's activated, it just sounds automatically when the loco goes around corners or over points, because I'm pretty sure Curoscale have built-in sensors um, onto the loco around the bogies. So, and when they and they sense when the loco, uh, basically when the bogies turn, it senses that and it then plays the flange squeal sound. <laughs> it's just amazing. Again, another attention to detail that they've managed to get in. Really, really good. Um, so obviously function 11, the flange squeal wasn't going to work at the moment, so we'll try that again later. Function 12 is short high air horn. Yeah, again, not, not too bad. Uh, 13 is the low air horn, again short. Uh, function 14 is buffer up. Oh, that's not too bad. So when you activate the function, you get the buffer lock, uh, buffer lock uh, the buffer up. Uh, probably not the best in my opinion, but it's not too bad. And then when you deactivate the function, you get the sound of the coupling up, which is uh, very, very good. That's not too bad. And function 15 is rail joints. Uh, okay, it looks like we're going to have to have the local rank for that as well, which is fair enough. Uh, function 16 is the guard whistle. Yep, does the job. Uh, function 17 is the Spyrax valve. Which for some reason doesn't work, so I'm guessing you have to have the engine running for that, so fair enough. Uh, function 18 is the tail lights on, and off, on or off, so I'm pretty sure that's uh, obviously the function that you would use if you've got the local coupled up to a rake of wagons, and then you can turn the tail lights off via a function on the Dakota. Uh, pretty standard these days, I suppose. Uh, function 19 is driver's desk, on or off. Now, is it actually on at the moment? So that's actually something I haven't checked. Can't actually see it at the moment. Let's see what happens if we activate function 19. Does it come on? Uh, can't quite see it. Let's change direction and see if we can see it there. Uh, nope, so let's turn function 19 off. Oh, no, it has come on. If I turn function 19 back on. Uh, it should come back on. There we go. I hope you can see that just there. Um, I can see it on the camera, so you should be able to. You can see there, the dials there in the cab lit up. <laughs> just amazing. Really, really good. I'm pretty certain that Batman haven't done that with theirs. So that's already something, something, another feature that Akira Scale have done, that Batman haven't, and that Akira Scale is cheaper. <laughs> so what does that tell you? <laughs> really, really good. So if we just flip the card over onto the other side, uh, function 20 is cab lights on or off, so I'm guessing uh, they probably shouldn't be on by default. Let's try turning them on. Is it going to do anything? Oh yeah, it has come on. Uh, change direction so we can get it in this direction, I think. Yeah, there we go. So hopefully you can see the cab light there. It has come on. Uh, for some reason, the lighting functions, they seem to take a couple of seconds um, to activate. So it's a bit strange. Usually, usually they would activate straight away. Uh, not on this loco, but not too bad, I suppose. It's got to be a bit more patient and they all work fine. So that's the main thing. So that's not too bad. So let's turn that off. Function 21 is the engine room lighting. So let's do what's that and see what that's like. Oh, yeah, that's very, very good. Nice and bright. You can see that very, very well. That's, that's very, very good. I wasn't actually expecting that, so that's nice. Function 22 is the night uh, nighttime light. So let's turn that on. Is it going to come on? Oh, yeah, there we go. We can see just there. I hope you can see that. If I just move the logo back a bit. We can see there that the high intensity headlight has swapped sides from this side to that one uh, to represent nighttime running mode. So that's very, very good. We'll turn that off. Just wait it to switch back. There we go. 
Function 23 is the depot lights. And I believe this is probably just another name for the parking mode, which should be tail lights at both ends. Is it gonna work? Usually that usually that's what it is. Okay, nothing at that end. Is there anything on the other end? Okay, nope. <laughs> I'm getting no lights at all now, so and that's a bit strange. Let's turn it off and there we go. Is it going to come? There we go. It's got the lights coming back on there. That's a bit strange. Usually, unless maybe unless the depot mode is just no lights at all, maybe. I'm not too sure, but usually I would expect probably to uh, in depot mode. I would expect the tail lights at both ends, but for some reason they're not coming on. Oh well, it's not too, not too, not uh, too big of a problem, I suppose. Function twenty four is the cab cab door open and close. Yep, not too bad. And then 25 is the radiator fan. Okay, looks like we have to have the engine running for that one as well. Uh, function 26 doesn't do anything. Uh, 27 is the fade out sound. So I'm guessing that's just to uh, maybe just to silence or quieten down the loco without actually turning it off. Uh, 28 is disable brake sound, uh, so that's irrelevant. And then 29 is the brake function, that's an automatic brake emergency. Uh, so I'm guessing that's just another function to, uh, for when the loco um, is actually running. So we can turn on the actual engine sounds now. So function one on. Yeah, very, very good. A nice amount of bass performance there to the sound over, overall. So I think what we need to do now is we'll get her running in, and then we'll come back, and then we'll couple her up to a train or coaches or wagons or something, and we'll really see what she's like. So I'll get her running in, and we'll come back in a moment, and we'll carry on with uh, testing her performance. Okay, so we're back, the Loco's finished running in, she's running very nicely, so I think we can move on now to doing a bit more testing with the performance. Now the next feature I thought I'd show you is the flan squill uh, feature that Acura Scale have included with these 37s. Now obviously with uh, most Locos, the flan squill function is sim it's simply, you activate, the function t you activate the function key and it plays the flan squill sound. However, with this 37, Akira scale have gone one step further with that. I've currently got the function activated, but as you can tell, very obviously, <laughs> there's no flange squeal sound playing at the moment. Now, I think there are some other manufacturers who have got uh, that function set so, uh, so that it also doesn't play when the loco is stationary. But as soon as you move off, whether, loco, whether the loco is on a straight piece of track or not, uh, you still get the flange squeal sound. But what Akira scale have done here is that they've included sensors um, on the bogies, oops, knocked the coaches there. Um, they've included sensors on the bogies, and what those uh, sensors do, when you activate uh, the flange squall function, those sensors will basically detect when the, uh, when basically when the bogies are rotating uh, left or right, and then it plays the sound automatically. And that is something that, <laughs> just, I think it's just an amazing feature. Um, well, to be honest, the Curious Color have basically done amazing overall uh, with this loco, I think. But even something like that, it just shows um, how far forward we've come with technology and stuff. But anyway, let's not, not waste any more time. Let's get the loco moving, and I'll show you the and I'll show you the feature in action. So if we just give her a bit of power, get her going at a fairly decent speed, and you'll see as soon as she goes onto the corner, we'll get the sound. And there you go. And back onto straight track again. Sound stops and back onto the curves again. Give us some more speed. Give us about half power. There we go. I 
think you'd agree that's definitely one amazing function there. I tend to not use Flan School very much, but I think with this logo, definitely I'll be using it a lot more. There we are. Now I think the last thing we need to do is couple a train up to her. Now I haven't got really masses um, of rolling stock that this logo would uh, particularly haul. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to stick the my two nuclear flask wagons on behind her, and we'll get in putting those. So I'll quickly uh, we'll quickly cut away. I'll put the wagons on, and then we'll come back and we'll carry on testing her. Okay, so there we go. We've got both nuclear flask wagons on. So I think all we need to do is give her some power and see what she's like. this time. I need to say anymore. I think she said it all for me. And Kira Scale have absolutely knocked their socks off with this. They really have done amazing. Definitely the best loco I've ever bought to date. And I do have quite a few of them. But in terms of detail, value for money, features, no other loco compares to this easily. It's just amazing. If you want a Mercura Scale 37, or twice, even if you do, or even if you don't want one, whether you don't want one, or do want one, need one, don't need one, just get one. You absolutely have to get one. They are absolutely amazing locos. Really, really amazing. It just shows how how amazing you can produce a loco with amazing detail, amazing performance, amazing features. All for such an amazing price. Curious Girl really do put to other manufacturers such as Batman and Hornby to shame with locos like this. Because you think Hornby and Batman, in some cases, or to us with Hornby in a lot of cases, they charge lo they charge way, way more money for locos that aren't as good as this. And they're indeed even really old toolings as well. But yeah, overall, absolutely fantastic. It's going to be very, very hard, I think, to beat this logo. It's just amazing. Really, really impressed. And now let's have some ratings for the new Akira Scale DRS Class 37 with DC Sound. And the detail, I've got to put 10 out of 10 for the detail. The detail for this logo is just absolutely amazing. Akira Scale really have knocked, knocked their socks off with this. They really have pulled it out of the bag. I just can't fault the detail. Loads of separately fitted parts all over the place, right down from the bottom of the bogies, right the way to the top of the roof. Loads and loads of detail all over the place, and it's all applied so, so well. I say it's applied so, so well. I did have one piece come off off camera, and because of that, you will see that I have marked the quality down later on. But apart from that one small detail coming off, apart from that, the detail is amazing. They really have fitted it all very, very well. Again, apart from that one piece, and they really just, they, I just don't know what to say. They really have done so, so well with this. Really, really amazing detail. Got to be 10 out of 10, no other way to put it. The performance on this Loco is also definitely 10 out of 10. The Loco runs incredibly well. It's smooth at all speeds, nice and consistent. It doesn't stutter at any point. The Stay Alive works very well as well. The factory fitted sound is absolutely amazing. Really, really haven't heard any other sound like this before. I just can't fault the sound. It really, really is the best factory sound I've ever heard. Performance, definitely, definitely 10 out of 10. If I give it more, I definitely would. The quality is the only area that I couldn't give this model 10 out of 10. As much as I wanted to, and I really did want to, there are only two very, very minor things that have had to make me mark the logo down very slightly on quality. First of all, I think the lights are just a bit too dim. I really didn't want to mark the logo down for this because the lights do work quite well. 
However, I just feel they're really, really dim, especially I think on one on one end compared to the other. You just can't see them very well, especially the tail lights. They're certainly not the best white pack headlights that I've seen. I have seen quite a few, especially on a couple of the other 37s that I have that have the custom uh, new custom noses fitted to them. Those like the lights on those are much brighter and better than on this model. So just because of that very 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 minor detail, I've had I have marked the logo down slightly for that because I do feel that the lighting could be ever so slightly better. And then of course the other reason, as I did mention earlier, I did have a piece of detail come off off camera. It was after I finished uh, filming the performance section, one of the steps by the doors did unfortunately come off, and it didn't look like it had been glued on incredibly well. So because of that very very <laughs> minor detail plus the lights, I have marked the logo down slightly on the quality. But apart from that, apart from those very, very minor issues, the quality is really good. Everything's been fitted very well, apart from that one, uh, one step. The livery's applied really well. It's all, everything's nice and straight. I can't really fault it, to be honest. But apart from those small issues, the quality is very, very good. Then finally, the value for money. I can't fault the value for money. A Curious Girl really have done amazing with this. For what you pay, absolutely get what you'll pay for and to be honest even more than that if we compare this to the rrp of batman's new tool class 37 which is around 350 pounds for the regular sound version and um, it might not be that much it might be slightly less but it is somewhere around that it's definitely quite a bit more than the akira scale one the value for money here that akira scale have done really is amazing they are definitely living up to their slogan of the quality models for or, or well it's realistic models for realistic prices they are definitely living up to that Really, really amazing value for money. Cannot fault it at all. That's an overall score of 9.75 out of 10. Definitely the best loco so far I've ever purchased and ever owned. I really cannot fault it. It's going to be very, very hard for another loco to beat this because it is absolutely amazing. If you don't have an Akira Scale Class 37 on order, then you definitely need to get one if you can because you will not be disappointed. They are absolutely fantastic locomotives.